So I asked the question, how do humans experience trauma? And I was interested in the cognitive experience, the physiological experience, and the emotional experience. And this is in a performance piece with the findings and the research. Human experience of trauma. The government reports that 3.6% of U.S. adults ages 18 to 54 have PTSD during the course of a given year. This represents a small portion of those who have experienced at least one traumatic event. 60.7% of men and 51.2% of women reported at least one traumatic event. And complex trauma is even more widespread, though less is known about it, and there are no nationwide statistics available. In complex trauma, the traumatic stressors may be associated with interpersonal relationships or mi micro stressors that form a network of trauma over time. In a survey about fear and trauma offered to my online Facebook community, 20 respondents between the ages of 23 and 40 completed the entire survey. 75% of participants were white, 10% were Asian, 10% were multiracial, and 5% were Hispanic Latino. 65% identified with having trauma. 75% of participants said it lived in their thoughts. 35% said their chest. And other places included the back, the heart, the stomach, the arms, the legs, and the throat. The following piece explores ph physiological, emotional, and cognitive experiences of trauma and anxiety through poetry, character, and embodiment. The survey results are also woven throughout. I am the amygdala. I am involved in the assessment of threat-related stimuli and or biologically relevant ambiguity. I am necessary for the process of fear conditioning. You need me. I am the hippocampus. I am involved in the explicit memory processes and the coding of context during fear conditioning. I interact with the amygdala during the encoding of ex emotional experiences. And I am the self. Whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> I'll tell you things you do or don't want to hear. I'm academia, external information. I take your logic and throw it back at you. <laughs> One neurocircuitry model of PTSD posits that the amygdala is hyper-responsive. The medial prefrontal cortex is hypo-responsive. And the medial prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus fail to inhibit the amygdala. Internal composure is key. Space facilitated by mindfulness and therapeutic arts. This is foundational to you, to your healing, to your psycho-spiritual well-being. Inevitable crises, interpersonal conflicts, developmental challenges, existential anxiety. I can't remember if I have existential anxiety. I'm the hippocampus, and I'm shrinking. I'm freaking the fuck out, and I'm gonna flood you with it. I've got the power, and I'm gonna squeeze you, giving you everything I've got. Shoot up my cortisol and norepinephrine, because I am your amygdala, baby. And I hate you and love you so much. Shut the fuck up. God, I'm shaking. I'm burning up, and then I'm freezing cold, and I can't speak. She said I have PTSD. Intrusive thoughts, flashbacks, hyperarousal, sleep disturbances, nightmares, changes in memory and concentration, and startle response. I can't remember anything. I'm sorry. Can you give me something? She said, I have complex trauma. I cannot form healthy attachments. It's complicated. It's pervasive, she said. You know, it's probably that punk from eighth grade biology who told me I was a lesbian before I could figure out anything for myself. Or maybe it's the patriarchy. 
Am I too privileged for complex trauma? Like, for any trauma? I'm gonna flood you with adrenaline, cortisol, blood. You won't be able to speak. You'll be panting. You'll have to go home. You shut down entirely from stress. I'm just overreacting. I, I can calm down. Headaches, stomach aches. God, I need a cigarette. <laughs> I can't sleep. I'm so sensitive. I feel everything and then nothing, and I don't know how to feel. Please stop looking at it. I can't remember. Let me get away. But I want to remember that good time when you can't remember it. I need to. You don't even have it anymore. I'll make you shake, baby, but no tears. <laughs> it's unnecessary triggering of the stress response, dysregulated triggering of the stress response, an amalgamation of this maladaptive coping, your own personal gateway to psychopathology, health risking behaviors antisocial behaviors, a twisted, innate, emerging, calm eye in the center of this hurricane. You must, you can navigate stressors. Constructively, compassionately, channel the positive worldview. Your own consciousness, intentional, skillful nurturance, mindful attunement with the self. It's like I'm always hyper aroused. <laughs> That's me, baby, and I love to love you so much. An amygdala-centric model of post-traumatic stress disorder. Amygdala hyperresponsivity mediates symptoms of hyperarousal and explains the indelible quality of the emotional memory of the traumatic event. Ding, ding. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. <laughs> An adequate influence by the anterior cingulate cortex underlies deficits of habituation. Ding, ding. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Ah, hi! It's and me! And decreased hippocampal function underlies forever. deficits in identifying Oh, we should hang out. I just had a new coffee place. You should talk about open. As well Are as you okay? explicit memory. Like, uh, okay, you'll text me, right? This model represents a final common pathophysiological pathway. Panting. This dysfunctional engagement and withdrawal. I want to say it, I just can't. I need to cultivate this. Well, what the fuck does that mean anyway? Am I predisposed to violence like some big angry man? Is this normal? it because of me. I know, but when I have you here... You don't care because you need me. I need you like this. Mm. She feels it in her chest and in her heart. <laughs> hey, do you uh, want to come over? This secure existential attachment, emerging characteristics of psycho-spiritual growth. What does your body do? I moved my hips up and down with hers. I started screaming. It flashed and then it shrunk and I never saw her again. She told me to breathe, that I could sing if I just 
took a breath and I started weeping. She just said hi to me on the train and I couldn't speak and she never called again. I felt my fingers in her hair. I braided it so quickly and she said it hurt. She was screaming and I couldn't stop and I couldn't remember and I just ran. And my body can only run and my heart can only beat when it's running and my blood is everywhere and my, my exhaustion shuts you up. Shut the fuck up! Why don't you try an SSRI? A selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor functions like this. In your brain, there are billions of neurons. Neurons meet at synapses. The presynaptic neuron releases neurotransmitters, and the postsynaptic neuron receives them. So the SSRI works like this. Serotonin neurotransmitters travel down the myelin sheath toward the synapse. They are released by the presynaptic neuron into the synapse. The postsynaptic neuron has receptors that take up some neurotransmitters. The extra ones go back into the presynaptic neuron through reuptake channels. Now SSRIs block the reuptake channels, so the neurotransmitters stay in the synapse and continue flooding the postsynaptic neuron, making you feel elevated moods, more relaxed, better able to sleep. The issue here is we don't really know how it will affect you individually lose receptors, may be hard to wean off the drug. Fuck! I can't, I can't decide. Well, how do you describe your trauma? Running has been helpful. Start close, one foot in front of the other. The beating of my heart that releases... Itself from my mind itself. From the screaming, what is my gut? Or oh, whatever they call that. It is... Physical. It is... All I have. Run. Hypervigilance. Can you tell yourself that? Running, sharing, and role-playing? Therapy helps. It's an overused word now. Do you know what it means? You can have ambition, but not too much. Not too much. Of any feeling. Of... You can, can, ha you can have control. I'll give you that. Run. Will you give you that? Run! Tom, loud alone! My memory, panic, and fear. They're unshakable. Fear shaking. Fear is unable to resource. Panic is paralyzed. Terror, song that is so buried. I'm running. I'm so dire. Writing. I try to think positive. Overcome myself. Can I overcome myself? My family. My partner. They are fighting for me. I am desperate. I am racing. Pain, confusion, and we all Denied the bottle. The crook of your arm. The pills my mom gave me when I was 14, red and shaking. My first bedroom. Alone. Oh. We, we are all so enlightened! enlightened. <laughs> Can you move with me? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Can you cry with me? No, no. I'm not gonna cry. I don't want to. <laughs> no. Will you laugh with me? Yes, <laughs> now I can. about how am I supposed to act. You don't want to freak the fuck out. It's some memory about science, like, I can't remember it. Memory and how memory is affected by negative things. It's there somewhere, I don't know where it is. I was walking in this building talking to myself out loud. The scene on the train happened to me, the memory and how crappy mine is in relation to specific things. The person normalizing it, like they're not a disgusting ass creep fucking person. I'm trying to do contact improv. And I was like, yeah. What's up? Or even laying next to someone? Oh God, they can feel how much I weigh, or oh God, they think I'm gross. It just seemed like unfortunate, or oh God, they think I'm a lesbian. You put me as a character that is mean and sexual. I feel totally distanced. I saw text messages. Less now that we've had this conversation. Exercise makes me feel sick. I felt so sick and I had to leave. I just got really into exercise. It floods your brain like an SSRI affects your brain chemistry. When I run three miles, it was just so therapeutic for me. I don't know if I think about it like trauma. It floods your brain during the process. Stressed about lines, stressed about intimacy, contact improv, you had to be on people. Why is the hippocampus so fucking helpless? Man up. I would have just not gotten it if I'd had to improv it secure because I believed there would be enough distance. Whatever we were doing that it wasn't going to be painful, it can't put the memories together. When you think of trauma, you think of being in a war, but it can be as simple as like a bad date or a bad text message. I knew it would be technical brain stuff and I wouldn't get it. Why the fuck is the amygdala mean and it's inside your body? That's stupid.
stupid. Research session. It looks like we've got some comments ready to go, but can you sure. just repeat it? So it was what no. <laughs> how do humans experience trauma? And then under that, like how do they experience cognitively, physiologically, and emotionally? I'm so interested in this part about the amygdala. Um, because trauma PTSD is like I've come to understand it is your body responds you know, you, you respond, fight, flight, or freeze in this traumatic situations, and your amygdala deals with that. Like, your amygdala is what hopefully saves you or brings you away from what's happening. And then your amygdala is sort of on call for, like, the course of your PTSD or forever, making sure that that doesn't happen to you again. And it was so it was refreshing almost to hear the amygdala be kind of like an asshole because I was like, yeah, I try to have a lot of compassion for my probably overgrown amygdala, but like, in fact, it's kind of a dick because like the rest of my brain is fine, but my amygdala still overreacts sometimes. So it was like I, I was, it was really nice to see that happening and to hear the science of it. Like I was really able to connect mind and body with watching bodies move and this and hear the science. And that was a really brilliant way of presenting your project because it really gave me a full circle experience of the amygdala in that sense. Okay. There were a lot of really big words in your presentation and I appreciate it. Um, but some of it went over my head. Mm -hmm. But when I saw it physicalized, in such a mm -hmm. sleek and sexy way. It was really quite, it, it was, it was very striking mm -hmm. uh, to kind of see that and how they kind of interacted. It helped me to understand it and it brought me to the video that we watched with yes. the, um, the doctor. Yes. 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 yes, and I actually mm -hmm. prefer this because of the style of it. And I, I guess I'm just saying I'm very appreciative of how you um, realized your research question because it, it translated for me. And, made it, it, and I, got, I got topics that wouldn't normally be engaging for me, mm -hmm. I found very engaging. And I was like engaged the entire time. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. I would like to echo that. that I, I'm, I'm totally blown away because I think it's better <coughs> than that mm -hmm. TED Talks because it is, where that, that showed me the possibility of using artistic medium as a tool within the context of the presentation of, mm -hmm. of findings. This was so vividly clear uh, in, its, in the use of the artistic medium as the actual explainer. And you guys, were, I can't, how, what, how did you do this? It's, I mean, it's amazing, I, like, the, it, this looks like you guys have been doing this on the road for a year. It's amazing, it was amazing. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed right now, fantastic. Um, it's so interesting because when Julia was asking us questions after, to construct her, like the end piece, um, it, I kept saying over and over, like, this makes me so nervous because science makes me so nervous because I forget like science stuff I forget like everything else I'll remember so easy and science stuff I forget so I'm like so nervous because and you know it was it was such an interesting process for me like how memory could be stored like in your body and in conversation but then like something about some memories they just refuse mm -hmm. to hold and it's like I had that first part the, the entire like I, I could say <laughs> and then any moment like I kept saying so much times like science is hard for me, science is science stuff, it's gonna be like this, like, I don't get it, I think I, like, it just affects your, like, memory, just like the hippocampus and the amygdala, all the stress that the self was feeling, I couldn't, the hippocampus couldn't hold the memories because of all these, and it's the same thing, like, in that experience, I felt the same way, like, all the stress of science is too much for me, like, it just, like, let go of the memory, like, in even it, though it wasn't, like, trauma, I have had what we'd call trauma in terms of, like, serious embarrassment and shame around like you know science and mathematics stuff so it just like released it in, mm -hmm. like you know and it was really interesting for me thinking back on that like wow like it, like how like 
It was kind of perfect weather. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, like, metaphorically, you should, I would actually, if you were going to, I would rewrite it that way. I would fix it, you know, that, that's a great edit for exactly that. Um, first of all, I'm blown away was what is the phrase I'm stuck with. Um, it was so visually beautiful. And it kind of felt like you were showing why drama therapy works. Yeah. It felt like the embodiment of drama therapy. There was no judgment. You distanced it. The, even the self, naming it the self, just as a being. Um, and it enabled me to feel compassion toward my own trauma. I'll t can I talk about that? So my first inspiration for using trauma and embodiment was that drama therapy is so effective working with traumatized people. And so I was first looking at articles just about using the arts to heal trauma. Mm -hmm. But then I, I also wanted to use the performance as sort of a, a means of like accessible education about the brain and about trauma. So I wanted to include more like scientific studies and concepts and not just work work about like arts therapy but make it about the art like create characters out of the, the brain structures and involve them in the story of this individual and her trauma um and then other things like evolved off of that i didn't know originally that i was going to use their reactions to the process but i used their, my interview with them as like that final poem and how they felt doing the improv and about the script and if it brought up their own traumas. Um, and then I also, some of it was like, some of the story was a little bit based on my own experiences and then also some of it was fiction, which I don't know if that's like ethical, but <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like the subway thing. So what I'm trying to say is, I started it looking at like drama therapy and trauma and how movement can allow one to access trauma, but then it sort of branched off. Okay. Anything else you'd like to say about how human beings experience trauma, like your own learnings in relationship to the question? Well, I think from doing this survey online, um, so many people said that they stored it in their body, in different body parts. So it was really interesting to me that people felt that, like they knew, you know, yes, I feel it in my legs or my arms. Um, and I, I think from doing this, I realized how important that physical exploration is to like talking about it and healing it and involving it in our discussions about trauma and our our therapy for trauma. Um, and then I was thinking today I had, this is like separate, but I had this interesting thought about ethics because when I first started this process with them, I thought like, oh, I'm just creating this like class thing. Like, obviously I don't, it's not gonna like affect them, you know? Like I didn't, I didn't have enough faith in myself to affect change enough to even consider ethics. So then today I was like, okay, now I feel like this is a little bit more and they're performing it for people and maybe like they did have something and that's why I interviewed them to try to like get at some of that. But I think moving forward in my life as an artist and a clinician, I have to like trust in my ability to affect people because that's key to ethics. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't just think, oh, like what I do will impact yeah. them. It's not about me, it's about me. It could, and I have to always be cognizant of that. Same learning as a researcher. Mm -hmm. yeah. This question you're asking about, is it ethical to move into fiction? I mean, that's sort of what we started this whole course with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Theater is a truth that seeks to reveal itself as a lie. And here you've, you know, you've given us a very complex lie, so to speak, you know, weaving in the words of the interviewees and weaving in the data that you found mm -hmm. and that you researched and giving us a very complex play, very complex mm -hmm. picture. Um, that definitely responds to your question. Um, you know, we've been reading Patricia Levy, for example, you know, her latest book, well, her latest book is called Blue, but the one right before that 
is actually about fiction as research. Because under all of this is fiction. I mean, that, that's sort of an umbrella. Mm -hmm. Can you, through the play, through the projective, through the symbol, through the metaphor, through the dance, reveal something true about the human condition? And you're answering with a resounding yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, moment and moment again in each of these presentations. So the ethics, yes. I mean, how do you interact with this work? And uh, you know, the trustworthiness piece, does this reflect um, with integrity what you or your participants wish to convey, yes, that's important. And, and the process you put in place to, to make sure that that integrity is there mm -hmm. is important, much like directing a play, much like editing, mm -hmm. much like you know, the process that all of you have spoken about in your presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just gorgeous work, everyone. Thank you for um, the risks that you've taken this morning. Can we give our four presenters this morning a round of applause? Thank you for breaking the ice. You did it marvelously. Wow. Um, so 12:30. It's 12:20. We're gonna uh, break and we'll come back. We're gonna start at 1:30. Okay. So if you can come back to shine. I wanted to start with. Yeah, no, I mean, I feel like i to um, I the dual things or contacts because she was there today. But Anna's alone thing was just sitting with your I should have interviewed you. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I really to bring it. And I didn't even strike until I was standing Well, that's what I was Yeah, I feel like I didn't do enough work. Um, you know, when you're in the I should do this. I would actually say, if you would I would suggest 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 I would suggest